All right, guys, here it is all built up and put together. And man, I really, really love this kit. It was fantastic to build. If you guys missed the live stream build of it, go back and check that out later on. Uh, it was, so I built this live and it was a lot of fun putting it together. You guys can see all my initial reactions to everything, but man, it is a fantastic master grade. It doesn't have a ton of detail on the outside, but what detail is there, I think is pretty tasteful. I, I like the amount of detail on it for me personally, but for those of you guys who like a lot more exterior detail, you might find this one to be a little bit lacking but I mean under the surface this thing is just a really nice good solid master grade in every sense I and mean, it's got a fantastic inner frame uh, which I mean is good just in terms of its looks it's the inner frame is nicely detailed but also you know it works really well and all the armor and everything on the outside is awesome too and the thing is huge it's a gigantic massive kit here so it's just really really super cool and before we get into it, I just want to start off with a size comparison here just so you guys can see how big it is. So there it is compared with a 1100 scale RX-782 Gundam there, the Verka to be precise. And yeah, you can see it's going to be much larger than your standard 100 scale Master Grade kit. So let's take a look at this big boy here. So we've got the stickers basically just for all the cameras, uh, the eyes there and these cameras here on the head around on the back of the head up there as well too you just got photo stickers for those uh, the v-fin is kind of interesting as i just kind of touched that and adjusted it it's very delicate so you want to be careful with that but it's also kind of articulated and that's not really meant to be but you can rotate the v-fin a little bit so just be careful that it's in the right position there's a double joint in the neck that will allow the head to go all the way up to there and then all the way down to have that massive uh chin pointing down towards the color there like that. The cockpit hatch does actually open up and you have a pilot figure up inside of there, just set up in there, it's an easy cockpit hatch there. And you have some really interesting articulation here in the midsection. The front part, you have a, like an ab crunch here where the front part will come down or like the whole upper body will come down over this uh, kind of middle section there. And then you have an extension where the whole part will move back but down below here that will move back and it actually kind of extends out of the crotch section there, kind of lifts up. So you have this back bend there like that, which is really quite interesting. And then of course some rotation there as well too with this really super tiny waist. Uh, the rotation in the middle, not gonna be an issue with that. The shoulder joint will pull out to the front a little bit there like that. And then uh, the shoulder armor is kind of on its own so you can move the shoulder armor on its own. Uh, this little flap here underneath can move on its own. The grenade or the uh, missile pause. I'll just show you these here real quick. So you can have the shoulder without those and this closes up but in order to plug those on you just open this up and like when you open that the little peg inside there also kind of moves at the same time to pop out and that's where the missile pods will be plugged onto there on the shoulder so really cool little gimmick there for that. The missile pods themselves can be moved individually and you can also open up the doors on those so those are really nice just really nicely detailed and I mean everything does exactly what it's supposed to do so it's really nice otherwise the arms may be pretty normal you have some rotation there at the top you have a nice double joint here in the elbow that'll give you a good solid bend there and also a little joint here right at the uh, base of the forearm there kind of at the base of the wrist that'll move a little bit there as well too and the wrist is just on a ball joint we do have a set of closed fists with this and i'll go over other hand options here in a minute but you have those uh, full fixed posed closed fist hands which look really nice and going down here to our skirt section this is all separate parts so no stickers or anything for that really nice color separation this front skirt bit will kind of fold down like that it's not really meant to do that for anything in particular as far as i know but just some articulation there for that. These side skirts are actually attached onto the top of the legs so you do have some individual movement of that but it's just all connected there at the top of the thigh. Around here on the back it's not actually a back skirt this part is actually kind of hanging off the back of the backpack and you can see where your action base adapter is going to plug onto that right there but one thing that I'll note about this part hanging down from the backpack here is that you have this vent detail where it's not like uh, just a molded detail but there is actually like slots in that vent where you could it like goes all the way through which is pretty amazing you have the same thing here for the chest vents there as well too where it's actual cutout slots and then you have the same thing on the shield which i'll show you here in a minute but while we're on the backpack aside from this uh, kind of tail part there moving there like that these parts also move here on the side you have this part which will pull out of there and then that's where your income is stored and you can pop that out and then we have the wire uh, for that so that just pops out of there easily enough put that back in place. The beam cannon or beam saber handle, if you remove that, that becomes your beam saber handle. When you plug your beam saber effect part into that, we'll see that in a minute. Otherwise, as it's attached, it's just a beam cannon. 
you can move this around, articulate this whole section around to fire the beam cannons out from underneath the arm there like that, which is also very cool. Then just going down here onto the legs, you have just a relatively simple joint in there for the hip section, but that will allow you a pretty good spread here. You can bring the leg forward and back without any issues here. Obviously some rotation there at the top of the leg. You got a nice double joint here in the knee as well for a good full bend there of that. And I want to take off the leg here to be able to show you guys uh, some more about this just because otherwise it's kind of hard to show you when the kit is all attached. But this part here on the back, when you bend the knee, it kind of sinks down into there for you to be able to, I guess, get like a more fuller bend. It doesn't really necessarily do a whole lot, but it's just kind of a small thing that moves. That part uh, sinks down as when you extend the leg out. This uh, thruster rail here at the back is more popped out there, you see that? And then when you close that, that uh, tucks down into there a little bit. So anyway, it's just a cool little bit. The uh, knee armor here on the front, this tiny little knee armor that you have there does also move with the knee. It's separated, attached onto the knee joint there. These bits here on the side are interesting. You have these flaps, uh, these will move in and out like that. You can also rotate these up and down. They're actually attached via a ball joint, which also kind of pops out. If I remove this off of here real quick, you guys can see that this is on like a hinge too, that that pops out. So actually you can attach this onto the ball joint and have it even more like off out to the side of the leg like that or close this up uh, just securely next to the side of the leg like that. Again, very cool. Really nice color separation here as well too. Even this little white bit on the toe that's actually a separate white piece. The toe will move on its own. The whole front of the foot will move up and down, up underneath the feet. You got nice full detail there. The ankle itself will be able to move side to side and forward and back. You can point that all the way down there like that. These parts here on the back can also move. Those are just attached via ball joints. So each of those two bits there on the side can be adjusted kind of the angle of those as well too. So its main weapon sort of is going to be the beam rifle here, which is a pretty weird and wild design. Uh, here you have stickers for the sides and the top and then for the main camera. Those are all actually clear parts. So if you didn't want to use those stickers, you've got just regular clear parts in there for those. Uh, so you can use those. But again, some nice color separation with the little white bits around on there. You have virtually no seam lines on here except for this middle part of the barrel, kind of the main piece. The tip is a separate piece, but this piece right here does have a seam line down the middle of that, but that should be pretty simple. Uh, this just fits into the hand. As you can see, pretty large handle on that as well too. Weird design, but nicely detailed, nice separation. Everything's good. Then you have the shield, which is even more impressive. Again, a really nice color separation here with separate white pieces all in there. Again, you have stickers for here and here, but those are actually clear parts underneath the stickers. If we prefer, you got gray bits sticking out here and here. And on the back, this is the other vent that I was talking about where it's actually cut out slots there. Uh, so that's really super nicely detailed. You got some nice detail on these gray parts here on the back side of the shield as well too. So overall, it's, you know, just like this I have one solid little thing, nothing moves or anything, but it's really fantastically detailed. So this just slots right onto the back of the arm right here. Or if you turn this piece around, it's just on a ball joint right there, then you can slot this onto the backpack as well too. It just fits right there onto the center of the backpack. Then as I was saying, for alternate hand options, you've got these where you've got the thumb is on a ball joint and then the fingers are swappable. So you have regular open hands. Then you have these holding hands for the massive beam saber handles, which are there on the back. And then you've got trigger finger hands and you've got trigger finger hands for the left and the right, even though you've just got the one uh, beam rifle there. And our massive beam saber effect parts, which are about as tall as the Gundam itself. So those should look pretty well impressive in use. And then you've got your standard action base adapter and your two wires for the incoms on each of these wires is 30 centimeters long just for your reference and you've got four of these little bits here which are kind of like the guide points for this so the wire doesn't just like float around all freely it basically goes from like one point should be straight from like one point to another point to another point uh, again like we saw with the excess gundam so you just kind of put this wire on there where or put this piece on there where the wire is meant to bend and then between them and between the income you try to make it look as straight as possible, which is not an easy task to do. It takes some work, but uh, you've got four of those little pieces for that. So basically two for each side. But all right guys, so as we get into trying out some different action poses and things, I will say that the 30 centimeters of wire is nice, but it's too long to hold up the weight. So if you try using the full length of the wire, you'll find it's just sagging, it can't hold up the weight. So what I've done here is just cut it in half 
and just use a two lengths of 15 centimeters, then obviously the incomes can't be flying very far away from the body. So uh, if you wanted them to be flying farther away, I would recommend just not uh, relying on the wire included with this and just getting some different wire uh, that's much harder. Even like using like a, a piece, I think it's probably like 1.5 uh, millimeter seems to be probably the diameter on that. So just using like a 1.5 millimeter uh, uh, brass or aluminum rod or something like that, and then you'd have to paint it. But you should be able to find like a 30 centimeter lengths of a brass rod or something and that should be probably a better bet to make sure that it's good and secure and not sagging by any way. Uh, this thing is awesome. So it just comes with kind of your standard uh, array of weapons in that it's just got the beam rifle, beam sabers, and shield. But even those are like very interesting in their own right. They're really super nicely uh, designed and everything, so they're really nicely detailed and all that. The, even the beam sabers are different in that they're the massive extra large beam sabers. And then aside from that, you do also have some like built-in weaponry in there itself uh, with the incoms and the missile pods up on the shoulders. So this thing is armed up and even though it doesn't have a ton of external uh, accessories, I guess is kind of what I'm trying to say, uh, there is still a lot that you can do with it. So it's a really cool kit. And again, just the size of it just makes it all the more much more impressive as well too. Super unique design and I'm really really happy with this one. I really enjoy building this kit and I'm looking forward to working on it some more. I'm gonna try to get to painting it sooner than later. Uh, we'll see if I can fit that in. Anyway, it's a really awesome kit. Highly recommend it to you guys. I know it's gonna be pretty expensive with it being a P Bandai kit and I think the list price on it was already uh, you know, around uh, 80 or $100, I don't remember it now suddenly offhand, but even around 80 bucks, I think it was probably around the list price for this. So yeah, it's gonna be more expensive than if you have the P-Bandai markup for those of you guys living in areas outside of uh, where P-Bandai stuff is normally sold. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty expensive kit, but definitely an awesome one for the collection. If you're a master grade builder, then I would definitely recommend picking up this kit or if you're just a fan of Gundam Sentinel in general. If you've already got the excess, you've already got the Faz, you kind of definitely have to have this one in your collection as well too. So I'm super happy with this. I hope, hope that someday they'll make a 100 scale Zeku Ainz kit, even if it's not a master grade, if it's just an RE100 kit or something like that, I would totally be fine with that. I think that would be a really good fit for an RE100 kit. Uh, making a Zeku Lines because, you know, with it probably not being popular enough to get a full-on Master Grade, and just because of the general kind of bulkiness of the design, it's sort of similar to the uh, Yakuza Doga, I guess, in that way, so I think it would make a good R100 kit, but we'll see if I, if that happens. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'd be really super happy if it did. Anyway, for the time being, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to USA Gundam Store for making all possible. Check the link in the video description down below and the coupon code to check out there and use at USA Gundam Store. So thank you to them. And thank you, you guys, for all your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated as well, too, guys. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Bye, guys.